So a few different people have asked me to make a video about Agenus Vonderplanets and I've finally gotten around to doing it. Now Vonderplanets is another pretend doctor with a stupid diet to sell and a committed group of followers who have been tricked into thinking that he's a genius. Dedicated idiot Casey Stern aka Vegetable Police once described him as one of the greatest healers of our time. You see those two men? That's Dr. Robert Morse and Agenus Vonderplanets the two greatest healers of our time. Now, a ringing endorsement from Vegetable Police and a comparison to notorious liar Robert Morse doesn't bode well. So what exactly does Vonda Planets advocate for? Well, it's a raw food diet that includes animal products. That might not sound too extreme, but you might be surprised to learn that Vonda Planets encourages his followers to eat not only raw meat, eggs and milk, but also rotten meat and moldy dairy products. Roll the clip. What would you do if you went to the fridge for a snack and saw this? If you're Agenis Vonderplanets, you grab a fork and dig right in. Believe it or not, he's been eating the foulest food he can find for the last three decades. Okay, well, that is obviously revolting, and if you're thinking about tucking into some rotten meat of your own, I think you'd want to be pretty sure that Vonderplanets is the real deal, so let's start with his claim to be a doctor. Here he is being introduced as Dr. Vonderplanets before giving a talk in 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been, uh, I guess, about six years since Agenis Vonderplanets was uh, with us the last time. I think since then he went back to England, got a PhD in nutrition, yes. so it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Agenis van der Thank you for being here. So at this point we're going to turn to an unusual source of information for my channel and that is natural news. Back in 2012 Mike Adams was writing an article on von der Planets and he asked to see his PhD certificate and von der Planets sent him this photo. Now Rich Munns University, not to be confused with Richmond University, is not a real school. It's just a website where you could pay for a fancy certificate and it went offline in 2006. Now I don't think you need a PhD to have an opinion on health and diet and I'm not going to dismiss anything von der Planets says just because he doesn't have a PhD. The important thing we can learn from this is that von der Planets lies. He lies to his followers about his qualifications and let's keep that in mind when we're confronted with some of his other claims because there isn't always going to be an obvious way to fact check what he's saying. So let's get into the biography and there's no way I'm going to be able to cover all of it because von der Planet spends so much time talking about himself. And you'll notice this about a lot of fake doctors and gurus. They love telling stories about their life and experience because they don't have any genuine research to present or education to draw on. And I think emotionally charged stories are far more compelling for his target audience. So the von der Planet's life story inevitably starts with him describing his ill health as a child and young man. I was dying of cancer of the blood, bone, stomach, and lymphatic system. I was defecating and urinating all over myself on the floor. By the time I was probably six, seven years old, I developed colds and flus that would last from three to five months. At 15 and a half years old, uh, right after my third polio vaccine, I started having angina pectoris, heart attacks. I was having a heart attack about five a week. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs, and every afternoon I break my arms. At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. Oh, no! No! It's also worth pointing out that von der Planets claim to be autistic to the point of being almost entirely unable to communicate. Now he puts the blame for his ill health on white bread, vaccines, soda, antibiotics, all the usual natural health suspects. But let's be clear, we don't know if any of this is true. It certainly sounds fanciful. Does any child really survive hundreds of heart attacks? And even if we grant that his ill health was genuine, we certainly can't trust that von der Planets correctly identified the causes. Let's take an example. He specifically cites the polio vaccine as the cause for his chest pain and supposed heart attacks. But could there be an alternative explanation? By the time I was eight years old, I started smoking. Mm -hmm. to the nicotine eye to mm -hmm. give me energy and I go at night into the kitchen and steal whatever coffee was left. 
Apparently, Von der Planet married young and had a child as a teenager before cheating on his wife, abandoning his family, and going to school for computing or architecture, although it doesn't seem that he ever graduated. Whilst at school, he was apparently also earning lots of money writing software for big companies like IBM while still enduring his ill health. Here he is talking about his time working as a software developer. Because they didn't have to train me. I was like, right. you know... Uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman in The Rain Man. I yes. could look at a problem and not have to write out the, the formula to get it. I had the answer. Of course, this doesn't really sound like any useful description of programming to me, and this idea of Von der Planet's life being like something he saw in a movie is a theme you'll encounter a lot if you watch his videos. So after enduring all of this ill health, Von der Planets was apparently suffering so much that he enlisted the services of hospice workers to conduct home visits, one of whom encouraged him to drink carrot juice and raw milk, at which point his autism was apparently cured almost instantly. Finally, I started drinking the carrot juice and the raw, I mean the raw milk, and uh, within 10 days of drinking that, my autism shut off. And this is the start of a series of unlikely revelatory experiences in Von der Planet's life. Because around this time, he apparently traversed the American continent by bicycle with a bunch of anatomy and biology books, living with indigenous people and searching for the secret to health. He was apparently cured of some of his ill health by eating fermented whale meat whilst living with the Inuit. He was subject to the wonders of raw milk while serving a jail sentence for a traffic violation in a rural prison. He was lectured on the importance of raw meat by a Native American ghost while on a vision quest, but his final revelation came when he decided to fast himself to death in the desert after his cancer returned. According to Von der Planets, he befriended a pack of coyotes whilst waiting to die in the desert. I'll let him explain what happens next. So then they hunted and brought me a jackrabbit. Jackrabbit was about a year old, so it was about seven and a half pounds. The ears were about this high. So. Now, you know, I hadn't eaten meat in six and a half years at this point, and they're offering me this rabbit. A few minutes later... All of a sudden, this whole sound bite came back of when my uncle was telling my brothers and cousins when they were going hunting, they were going rabbit hunting, that if they caught a wild rabbit, they shot a wild rabbit, they had to cook it thoroughly till it was well done and burned because they have microorganisms in them that will take over in their intestines, be extremely painful for 48 hours and will kill you. So that played back and I understood it, every word of it. I thought, oh, the coyotes want me to help me die quickly. So they, knew, they know that they'd become my friends and if I fast to death, it could be 45, 60 days before I die and it's going to be miserable. I was already at two weeks and it was pretty miserable. So, picked up this rabbit, and then I started eating it, and I was able to eat it. And after about 15 bites, it became tasty. Now, I think this story is really weird on a few different counts. Why did Von der Planets want to starve himself to death? He took the freight train from Alaska to California for this mission. Couldn't he have just let the train flatten him? I don't follow Von der Planets' logic about the coyotes. If they wanted to hasten his death, they could have just killed him. And lastly, I don't understand Von der Planet's supposed conviction about the dangers of raw meat. He had just spent the last several years traveling the continent looking for the secret to health among the indigenous peoples. And what did they tell him? I lived with the Yaqui Indians in, um, in northern Mexico, with the, uh, Mayan, the Mayan Indians in uh, the Yucatan, the Sioux in the Dakotas, and the Inuit in Alaska. And all of them told me, the only way you're going to get well is to eat raw meat. So here he is, confronted with this raw meat at the end of his journey, and despite all of the advice he received, what knowledge does Von der Planets draw on when deciding how to proceed? Something his uncle said 20 years ago. Really, what was the point of his journey? So after eating the jackrabbit and feeling revived, Von der Planets decides that eating raw meat is the way to go. So I went, uh, I started eating, I started trapping chipmunks and birds and eating eggs and it's not enough food in the desert. I mean, I eat tarantulas and I pop the, you know, and the scorpions, I pop the, the poison sack off and eat them because I knew I had lived with a, a girl who was from Peru and she ate insects and stuff all the time. So 
I started eating all that stuff, but there just wasn't enough food. So I went down and made deals with all the surrounding farmers for dairy. I'd milk their cows or their goats and shovel manure for them. I'd do anything in exchange for all this food. So in two and a half months, I gained about 50 pounds. And I looked like a scale, you know, scaled down Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I went back to Los Angeles to spread the word. Raw meat, raw meat. And they said, oh, are you out of your mind? And so finally, Von der Planets has found the secret to health and emerges from the desert to spread the word. And I don't think it's an accident that Von der Planets says that he fasted alone in the desert and emerged with an important message for humanity. It's a very old trope, and he even quite explicitly draws comparisons between himself and Jesus Christ. At that time, I was bearded, long-haired, you know, so, and I wore robes. You know. And I slept in graveyards most of the time. Nobody bothers you in a graveyard, especially, <laughs> especially when you look like J.C. So that's the very abridged version of the biography, and I'm not going to talk in any detail about him supposedly nursing his abandoned son back to health after a car crash, or his fight for raw food rights. I think Von der Planet's life story sounds like that of a serial liar. My guess is that he's told so many different stories to different people, when he comes to talk about his life in the present, he's forced to combine all these different tales into a frantic cacophony of events. Perhaps he told one person that raw meat cured his cancer, and another that raw meat cured his autism. And slowly we build up to the point where raw meat is curing dyslexia, autism, angina, peritonitis, brittle bones, bursitis, vertigo, and more. You can see a similar pattern in his employment history, education, and how he came to learn the truth about raw meat. And whilst we're never short of stories from Von der Planet's life, any proof or evidence is sparse. But we are left with some pretty gaping plot holes and jarring images. Did he really traverse the entire continent on a bicycle wearing robes and never take a single photo? The whole motivation for the bicycle trip in the first place was because he decided he wouldn't learn anything from the medical book, so why did he take them all with him? Did he really raise his son from a coma, Lazarus style, without his son or ex-wife ever coming forward to confirm this version of events? And do we even know if he has a son? Was Von der Planets an actor on General Hospital without ever being credited or showing up in any footage? Did Von der Planet study and graduate with a PhD in the early 2000s? <coughs> oh wait, no, we know that one, he didn't. Did he really meet an Indian ghost called Elk of the Black Moon at Pine Ridge? Or did he rip it straight out of this popular 1930s book called Black Elk Speaks, which is about an Indian holy man who lived at Pine Ridge Reservation? Okay, so let's move on to Von der Planet's ideas about health. He's filled two books and hours of interviews with his garbage ideas, so let's take a few of the recurring ones and subject them to some scrutiny. So, so there's, no, there's no cross species... Of, uh, of flus, you right. can't do of, of, of viruses. It's impossible. Right. I mean, you can get you can get a, 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 a herpes from another human being, obviously, but you can't. No, necessarily... you can't. Oh, you no, can't. that is false. Also. So, how do people transfer herpes from one one person to another? They don't. That is also a fallacy. That's like saying, okay, the bears in northern Mexico come out of hibernation, and then the the next door bears come out of hibernation all the way through the United States, all the way up to Canada, and all the way up to Alaska. So, you're saying that that is an epidemic. We have a bear epidemic. So this idea that bacteria and viruses do not cause disease is a pretty important one to von der Planets, and it's really quite hard to fathom how people fall for this one. Firstly, it flies in the face of our everyday experience of how certain diseases transmit from individual to individual. Most of us in the UK probably had chickenpox as children, and the only way you get it is by contact with another individual with chickenpox. Same goes for colds and flu. Von der Planet's explanation is that different environmental conditions favor the detox of certain tissues and that bacteria and viruses are the body's way of detoxifying tissues. It's really difficult to summarize all of the evidence for the germ theory of disease in a short video like this, so I'm going to take a slightly historical approach to try and show that this isn't some newfangled idea or conspiracy by pharmaceutical companies. So let's start with the Black Detox. No, sorry, I mean the Black Death, which wiped out 30-60% to 60 of the population of Europe. 
Now, even in the Middle Ages, people were suspect of ships that had travelled from infected areas, so in Italy they subjected the ships and crew to a 40-day period of isolation, hence the term quarantine. They were evidently aware that something both unseen and contagious was responsible for the spread of disease. And people have tried to explain the mysterious way in which certain diseases seem to catch between people or appear in specific areas for thousands of years. Theories from ancient Greece described seeds of disease and later ideas included miasma, the idea that smells caused diseases. Now, the terrifying plague doctor outfits worn in the 1600s might not have worked that well, but it's obvious that people had some kind of inkling of the issue at hand. So the discovery of tiny living creatures that could only be seen by microscope finally offered an explanation for these long-known observations about the nature of disease, and the application of this knowledge has led to an enormous reduction in deaths from infectious diseases over the last few hundred years, mostly through improved hygiene and sanitation, but also through vaccination and antibiotics. In the context of diet, we know that eating raw meat puts you at a high risk of developing infections, because cooking meat kills microorganisms. Notice what I said there, higher risk. Primal diet fanatics often point to their eating a single piece of raw meat and not getting sick as proof that the germ theory of disease is mistaken. Vonderplanet seemed to think that eating a single rabbit would likely kill him. The truth is that you can eat raw meat, and it won't always make you sick. Lots of people eat some kind of raw meat, like sushi, steak tatar, or raw oysters, and obviously people can get food poisoning from meat that they have cooked. But this will mostly be due to poor hygiene practices like cross-contamination between preparation surfaces. Here's an interesting study I came across which seems relevant to discuss given Vonderplanet's obsession with indigenous consumption of raw meat. In 1975, an extended common source epidemic of trichinosis attributed to consumption of walrus meat involved 29 persons in Barrow, Alaska. Of those persons eating this meat, 64% became ill, and the rate of infection of persons eating meat prepared with little or no cooking was four times as great as that of persons eating cooked meat. One year later, a second outbreak occurred when a family ate partially cooked meat from an infected walrus. So in summary, eating raw walrus meat may not be such a smart move. Now, controlled experiments are few and far between in this area because the facts about raw meat and sickness are pretty well established, and no one likes getting sick on purpose. Here's an interesting study I read anyway. Parasites were identified in samples of a Lebanese raw lamb dish being served in different restaurants in Brazil. Seven human volunteers ate some of the contaminated meat. Two developed diarrhoea, and then parasites were identified in the feces of six of the volunteers. Unfortunately, we don't have a control group of cooked lamb, and I suspect that's because the researchers were more interested in establishing the risk of infection in their small pool of volunteers, rather than verifying the already known fact that a correctly operated oven will kill microorganisms. Okay, so not only does von der Planet say that microorganisms cannot cause disease, he also insists that our body's functions are primarily bacterial. Now you have to consider what we are. We are bacteria. <laughs> you are a half a percent human. For every one human gene, you have 150 bacterial genes. So you have to take everything the pharmaceutical and the medical industry say, no matter who it is, whether it's an alternative or what, and you have to question what they say based on the theory of the bacteria. Now, whilst it is true that bacteria live on us and inside of us, and that the human body contains more bacterial cells than human ones, there's a couple of important points here. Firstly, bacteria are really small. If I cover a person in ants, it would be true to say that this person has more ant legs than human legs, but he's not going to walk very far on these ant legs. And von der Planet's idea that bacteria are essential is just flat out wrong anyway. People have been breeding germ-free mice for years, and they actually live longer than normal mice. It's also possible to create germ-free humans, but obviously this is only done to individuals who are already sick to begin with, because it requires total isolation, which is harmful in its own right and expensive. So von der Planet's focus here is all wrong. The microbiome exists, and it has an important role in health and disease, but your body's functions are not 99% bacterial. By mass, human cells dominate. Bacteria might make up just 1% of the weight of a typical adult, and these bacterial cells are in fact dispensable. 
So where do these wrong ideas about bacteria lead von der Planitz to? The infamous rotten meat, or as he calls it, high meat. Here's the recipe. Place raw meat chopped into bite-sized pieces in a glass jar, equal air and meat space. Place the lid on the jar tightly and put it in the refrigerator. Every three to four days, take the jar outdoors, completely remove the lid and wave the jar in the air to exchange the air inside. After four weeks, you may begin to eat one marble-sized piece once or twice every week. To make eating high raw meat easier, take it outside because your home will stink for up to 36 hours. Do people actually eat this? Yes, unfortunately they do. Now exactly what evidence von der Planitz has for the primal diet and his high meat actually helping people is kind of difficult to pin down. His books are simply full of sentences like, I have seen, or I have observed, and there's lots of remedies and recipes for various ailments. Let's take this section where von der Planitz jumps from addressing hiccups to HIV as an example. I'll quote from his book. HIV is toxic and exhausted condition affecting lymphatic, nervous and blood systems that are failing, caused by caffeine, medical and recreational drugs, alcohol, smoke tars and other chemicals, including from cooked food. HIV is not AIDS, which involves a different virus. The one client who I followed the longest did very well, living with HIV positive for almost 10 years. He followed my raw food suggestions only sporadically, but they were always helpful. Then he panicked during a three-month bout with tiredness and exhaustion. He underwent chemotherapy that thinned him of his healthy constitution. Consequently, he died from medical poisoning within a year. A Wanza has found that eating three to six tablespoons of cold-pressed below 96 degree Fahrenheit flaxseed oil a day, several days weekly, helps strengthen all systems. Adhering to a balanced raw diet makes living with HIV easy and asymptomatic. Well, this just about sums it up. We're basically being asked to take his word for it. Von der Planet says that HIV is caused by coffee and cigarettes, but he doesn't explain how he knows that. He confuses the terminology of HIV and AIDS, as we might expect. He describes a single case, which he can't really learn anything from. And he tells us that a balanced raw diet with flaxseed oil is the solution. Any takers? Unfortunately, yes. In 2003, 3% of HIV-infected people were substituting effective medicines for alternative treatments, endangering themselves and those around them. Sometimes, von der Planitz claims that he's done experiments. Let's take this example. To prove that higher bacterial levels advance healing, I observed 10 subjects, each with three open wounds. On each subject, I treated one wound with alcohol. I treated another with the subject's urine only. The third wound on each person was left untreated to heal on its own. The wounds treated with urine healed about three times faster than the ones treated with alcohol. The wounds that were untreated healed a little quicker than those treated with alcohol. Conclusion, alcohol destroys bacteria and retards healing. A high bacterial level inspires healing. Most of these experiments read exactly like this. Von der Planitz never cares to provide us with any numbers or statistics. His subjects are always conveniently compliant and the results always demonstrate exactly what he predicted. Von der Planitz sometimes claims that he gets his patient's blood or tissue tested, but he never describes where he gets these tests done or what exactly was being tested for, let alone what qualifies him to order and interpret such a crazy array of tests. Here's another of his experiments. To prove that medication stores in the tissues, a Wanza suggested that I examine people who have a long history of drug treatment. I found hard, dry areas on their skin. I had small tissue samples cut from these hard, dry spots and had them analysed for chemicals. Every tissue sample was found to contain small amounts of medical chemicals, specifically those containing alkaloids. Now I don't believe that these experiments were ever done. There's no photos, no copies of the tests that were ran, no participants have ever spoken about taking part, but even if Agenis was out there rubbing urine into open wounds and cutting lumps of skin off to send to a mysterious lab, these results can't support the conclusions that von der Planitz is making because his experimental design is just criminal for all kinds of reasons. Another sort of scientific claim that von der Planitz made about his diet was that his results in treating people with cancer were validated by Elnora Van Winkle at Columbia University. Elnora was not at Columbia, she was long retired from New York University. 
and it seems that she was something of an enthusiast for nonsense in her later years. She had a string of peer-reviewed publications in the 70s in the field of neurochemistry, but her last paper was published in 2001 in the non-peer-reviewed journal Medical Hypotheses, and it reeks of pseudoscience. In any case, she wasn't especially qualified to assess von der Planet's claims, I've never found her report on his patients, and curiously, von der Planet himself didn't seem to have a copy either. So enough on the theory, what about the practice? How are people doing on the primal diet? Let's take a look. So this is raw pigeon breast. Wild pigeon. This other one here is um, raw minced lamb. Very fatty. Mm. So I've just got out of the doctor's <sighs> they sent me for blood tests and a scan. Uh, okay, so what's been going on? I think maybe six times this year. Five or six times since starting this diet. I've been severely sick. <laughs> Oh dear, what about the Primal Diet Facebook groups? It's your boy. Eight days straight of watery diarrhea. I ate raw pork every day in June. Do you think I have worms? Hey guys, I ate nothing but 15 raw eggs and 10 tablespoons of raw butter today and I feel like I'm going to throw up now. Is this normal? Had a bunch of raw oysters the other day, second day just felt odd throughout the day, and the next night throwing up repeatedly all night. If my meat, poultry or dairy are even slightly going rancid, I get really sick for days. Perhaps these people should start questioning the logic of the primal diet after incidences like this, but they rarely do. He really is treated like a god. Here's a post I saw just today. At Rawsome Food Club we called Aginus Godginus. People seem to have lost confidence in their ability to manage even the basics. Here's a video of Aginus explaining how he consumes liquids from a bottle. What I do is I put my teeth together, open my lips, I put my tongue behind my back teeth, and I suck. Does anyone really need instructions on drinking from a bottle? Okay, other than babies. Remember this advice wasn't cheap. Vonda Planets was charging these people $100 each. For a private consultation you had to go to the seminar, buy his book, and pay him another $350. Perhaps the most pathetic of all is this guy. He's asking for an aginous approved remedy for untangling his hair. I've got an idea for him. Use a comb. Okay, so we could spend forever laughing at these people on Facebook. Ultimately, some of them are sick and some of them are well, just like people on any diet. I don't actually know if they're getting food poisoning more often than the general population, but I'd have to guess that they are. If we really want to know whether or not the primal diet works, the only way to show that would be to run a real scientific study comparing the health of people on the primal diet and a control group. And until that study is published, we should be rightfully sceptical of the primal diet because of its non-scientific basis and its dangerous ideas. I'm sure to receive all of the usual testimonials in the comments below, and I'm always going to ignore testimonials because they aren't a reliable way of reaching the truth. Perhaps I'll have to make a whole video on why it's so bad to listen to them. People often accuse me of trying to force people to change their behaviour, or of telling them what to eat, and I'm really not trying to do that. Look, if people want to eat raw pork brains or rub urine on their wounds or insert butter where the sun doesn't shine, I think everyone should be free to do those things. What worries me is that people might be motivated to engage in these behaviours without a true understanding of the risks and benefits. Okay, so this is my longest video yet. I put a lot of work in. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and share it. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to my channel.